Greetings friends on this chilly winter day. I think the temperature, the low actually got down to 19 this morning and uh, it's been pretty chilly, at least for us. I know there's some other areas that experience a lot colder temperatures, yeah. but for us that's, that's pretty cold. It is pretty cold. And uh, we haven't had any snow or necessarily ice yet like some of the other areas like in the mountains close to where the roads live. They've had some snow and, yeah. and ice, but we haven't had any yet. We had a little bit of sleep just uh, the other day. About a week ago. But um, other than that, we've been mostly fine. Just a little chilly. I did see a little bit of ice on the pond this, this morning with the temperatures being as low as they have been. But uh, we've been staying warm in here. Thanks to the mini split and the wood stove that right. we've been using. I woke up and it was still, I think, 65 in the house, which yeah. is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. We can get a little even warmer than that if we work, and work at it. And, but uh, a lot of people wonder with us living in a yurt, and just in case you're tuning in to this channel for the first time, yes, we live in a yurt. Ta -da! <laughs> <laughs> this is where we live. And uh, how we have heated our house for most of the time that we've been here has been through our wood stove. But a couple months ago, we installed the mini split system. We have one here, bing, and then another one uh, in our bedroom. And they have been doing a fantastic job. However, there's a couple of things that we have learned here recently about the mini split as far as what to look out for every couple of weeks. Yeah. And that is... We need to clean the filters more than you would in a regular house because we have a lot of dust from the farm, farm life, and also from the wood stove. Yeah. So you may be wondering, why are you running both of the systems? Well, we brought, we got the mini split system to cut down on work uh, of running the wood stove and uh, that has helped out a lot. So we're not having to split so much wood, burn so much wood. So we could just go with using one or the other. We could just go with the mini split system and just use it, or we could go with the wood stove and just use it. But we're we're using both right now. And uh, using the wood stove with the mini split has cut down on the power that the mini split has to use. So yep. we're, we're trying to find a balance that works for us. Definitely recommend both of them. <laughs> you can go with one or the other, but I really like having both of them. But if it gets really, really cold, you do need a second heat source with the mini split because what it does, it's a heat pump. It pulls the heat out of the air outside and puts it inside. And if it's super cold outside, then that makes it run even harder and it's not as efficient and you won't have as warm a heat. So just be, you know, mindful of that if you live in one of the more extreme colder areas. And one of the negatives with having just a wood stove is if you are sleeping heavier than normal and you don't add wood to the fire, you can wake up and it can, it can be pretty chilly. 45! <laughs> so try to avoid So having the mini split has helped with that so we don't have to worry about getting up super earlier in the middle of the night to add wood. Also, whenever we would go away, like if we're gone all day for like a church or event or out of town seeing friends or whatever, and then you come back home and it's, it's just cold, cold and you, then you got to start everything a fire from scratch, that's not that fun to deal with. No, so it takes the a mini, little while to warm it up. Yeah, and the mini split system has been a huge blessing with that. We just come home and it's warm and it's just like... Ah, I don't have to get to work and starting a fire and get warm this real quick. This is what other people experience <laughs> yeah. when they just walk into their house. And That's what warm. those normal city folk have to do with. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, it's about time right now. We've had to crank up the wood stove a little bit more than usual last night. And that's because it's time to service the mini split again. It's probably, the filter's probably dirty. And when that has happened, we've noticed that it's not quite as powerful with kicking out the air. So... Let's open the baby up and let's see uh it needs to be clean. What he really means is Lacey, can you go clean the the filter for me? That's what it really means. She's my translator too, you didn't know that. <laughs> oh, oh, I can at least get the chair for you. I am somewhat of a gentleman, right? <laughs> see. I do open doors and all that other stuff for you. Yes. <laughs> Alright. Right there about good for you. <laughs> I think I'll make that do. <laughs> you, need a, you need a hand up too? <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> the decrepit old woman over no, here. No, I didn't say that. Woo! Yeah. Oh yeah, it looks a little dusty up there. 
and they're super easy to take off. You just lift it up and gently pull it off so I don't oh, get dust all in my eyes. You can hand it to me. There's one. There's another one. And we're gonna turn it off. Oh, people probably wonder about why our walls are two different colors. Can you explain that to you? Because <laughs> <laughs> when we put the mini split up there, we had to kind of make an, ad an addition. And uh, we just put up whatever we had. And that's all we had, So, and we haven't painted because we really want to kind of redo things in here. I'm gonna translate it to her on this one. <laughs> so what happened is, like she said, we had to add another section to expand so the mini split system would actually fit on the wall there. And uh, we put the drywall up there, but we haven't completed the project. So it's just not a, another one of those things to add to, to, that is on the list to finish. The long list of things to do. There's quite a few things on the list. Actually, I haven't seen you do this before. You just kind of beat it off? I just kind of tap it off, yes. I probably should wash it off. And I may do that another time, but... Today, I'm just gonna do it like this. And I'm sure some of y'all out there probably have better suggestions for me how to clean this. But this is what's working right now for me. There you go. Wow, so it comes out pretty easy. It's almost yes. like we have an air purifier at the same time with these things. <laughs> okay. Whoa. All right, let me give you a hand again. <laughs> Hold this. I can do that. Minion. Lift things up, pick them up. Lift, put, I can't even remember <laughs> how to say it. <laughs> Lift things up and put them down. That's what I'm good for, right? That's right. While I'm already up here, I'm just gonna wipe this down because it's kind of gross. Minion, will you move my chair? <laughs> Turn it back on. Feel more power coming out and that's one of the things I noticed when Lacey changed it the last time or when she cleaned out the filter the last time is uh, there was definitely a change in the force of the air coming out of there and uh, you can feel it. I so, give you heat. So who would think you, you clean the filter off and the unit works better? Who would think that? I don't know. <laughs> Amazing, right? Amazing. Well, well, that's done. Another thing that I enjoy doing, I think you do too, during the colder seasons and helping stay warm is to have a good warm drink in the morning. Yes. And uh, I'm a tea person. You like coffee for the coffee most, most part. I'm not a coffee person. But I like tea too. I like coffee in the morning and tea at night. Let me know in the comment section below, what type of person are you? A tea person or a coffee person? I don't just like any tea. I'm not just a like, lifting tea like type guy. He doesn't like black tea. I'm like an herbal even make your own wild edible <laughs> tea person. I come up with some weird stuff. But also we really like, hang on just a second. So one of the things that I've been doing recently and Lacey has too, she's actually put me on to it, is putting chaga in my tea. And I think you've been putting it in your coffee too, right? Yes. What you got here? Oh, farmhouse teas. My friend Cian owns this company and they grow their tea and they sell it and it is fantastic. We have birthday cake tea and creme de la crop gray tea which is an earl gray which I love and she's got tons of other flavors too. 
and uh, if you want to buy some for yourself I'm gonna leave a link down in the description and you can pick you some up because let me tell you it's so good so good one of my favorite teas that I've been drinking a number of them from here because these are the kind of teas that I like is the turmeric tea that one was was pretty good it sounds crazy I know I'm a crazy person so keep that in mind too but the oh. turmeric tea is really good really good for you and what was that other one that I like was it it was, it was carrot cake yes that was another good one let me tell you the best Carrot cake, well, carrot cake tea. I've never had another carrot cake tea, but it's so good because it's got the ginger and the star anise. It actually has carrot in it too. But what I, it sounds really weird, but I would make me a cup at night in my French press and I left the tea in it and I added my coffee grounds the next morning and made coffee in it too and then let it sit. So my coffee had the all of those ginger and anise and all those other flavors and it was so good it was like flavored coffee hmm. but i'll also make nettle tea we'll do like uh plantain tea we do peppermint all, kind of, all kind of stuff yeah we've got peppermint growing in the greenhouse just had some of that too occasionally we'll do comfrey tea but, yeah. but i mentioned chaga earlier and the kids actually thought or think that they have a spot where they see some chaga that may be growing outdoors and uh, you actually know a little bit more about the chaga than I do. I just kind of recently started learning a little bit about it. But tell us a little bit about the chaga. I don't know if that's chaga or not. I know chaga is a fungus and it grows on birch trees. And it has lots of good medicinal properties and full of minerals. But I, I don't know very much. I'm just going to throw it out there. I just don't know. Let's go take a look at it. Let's see if they'll show us where it is and... Uh like examine it or something. <laughs> Alright, so Sailor, where's that chaga thing you think you found? <laughs> well, we're gonna have to walk a, a ways, but all right, well, let's walk. You lost somebody. Come on, just out. And one of the things that we've been doing here recently is we've been integrating our dogs with our goats. We're actually planning to get some sheep from our friend at Comfort Farm, John Jackson, in the upcoming months. So I, I've been a fan of Greg Judy and the style that he raises his sheep with the dogs. And uh, so we're trying to implement more of that. And so far, it's been working out pretty well with the dog Cyrus here hanging out with the goats, running around. And uh, somebody had asked in a previous video about the housing that we will have with the dog because we are going to be moving the sheeps and goat, the goats, and then the future sheep uh, in the upcoming months. And we're planning to move the dog with them. And uh, right now, they, he has just a house right there, the barrel that we're using. But thinking of making like a mobile house where he can move with them. And uh, so that's just a work in progress. So. If you haven't seen Greg Judy, make sure you check him out. He's got some, some pretty neat concepts that he does, and there's a lot of people who are doing some amazing stuff out there. And uh, we just try to learn from them and, and uh, grow ourselves. All right, so where's this chaga at? This way. Well, let's down here. Uh, this. Not taking me on some wild goose chase, are you? Oh, is that it? Yep, right over here. What do you think? Is that it? I don't know. That's <laughs> the thing. <laughs> I'm knocking it down. I've read multiple things about it, but this could just be a burl. Um, and some people actually cut burls out of trees and make bowls out of them just because it's wood that's grown kind of funky. Looks like some alien life form that has absorbed onto this tree and it's just holding on to it and it won't let go. 
and then it's gonna release it's like some alien eggshell it's gonna release all these tiny little aliens they're just gonna come out and get this uh and then like uh, <laughs> well, can we take some of this off and like examine it more closely i don't know I, chaga supposedly grows like straight out from a tree but i i have no idea about this I may just take some pictures and send it to some friends because I know they can identify it. Yeah, and one of those things with mushrooms, you don't want to experiment without knowing for sure what you're doing because you could have some pretty serious consequences happen. You can eat. Any of those. You can eat ev any mushroom once, but some of those they may be the last time you eat anything. I don't want to try that. No. <laughs> don't don't sign don't me up for do that. that. Either, so. I don't want to be experimental. <laughs> Anytime <laughs> An experiment you are while myself? harvesting anything, make sure you know what you're harvesting or you have someone that can identify it for you. That goes with, that goes with mushrooms and greens. We do a number of different uh, foraging for wild edible greens like yeah. plantain, both types of plantain and then dandelion. and Or anything, different pine trees. You yeah. can harvest white pine needles and use them for tea and they're full of vitamin C so you can do that but other pine trees I've so I've heard that you're not supposed to har harvest those but it's easy to tell if it's a white pine so I guess we'll just cut off a piece of this specimen for further evaluations for some of our friends to let us know what it is yeah I'll take some pictures and I'll send them in all right well, Taylor you said something about there's some resin around here as well yep all right show us where that is yeah Hey, come on. Hey. Hey. Got Zora over there hitting trees. Okay. Got Zora over there trying to knock out all our trees. <laughs> Actually, some of them need to go, so I guess you can do a good job. Now this tree right here is a white pine and you can tell it's a white pine by one if you look at the trunk and you look at um, the limbs coming out they they grow out in a ring so there'll be a ring of branches and it'll be straight up and there'll be another ring of branches and it goes up like that and then another way you can tell is if you look at the pine needles and you pick off one little bundle right there what you'll find is you'll find five little pine needles per bundle. So that's how you know it's white pine. It's really good if you take the pine needles off and boil them in water and drink the tea. It tastes really good and you'll get vitamin C out of it. So in the process of culling out trees, this is one of the trees that I definitely want to keep because there's some medicinal benefit to this tree. And besides, this one's growing up very well. It's not having to compete with too many trees because it's actually the more dominant one. Some of these smaller ones need to come out around it. But other than that, it looks good. We got this tree right here that's falling over. This one not looking that good. And then right over here is another one. So I got some more tree work cut out for me. Where's this stuff at, Taylor? Ooh. Here. Interesting. What do you call that again, Taylor? Resin. When did you find this one, Taylor? Like the other week. And then we, Mommy and I were just, and Josiah and Micah, we're all just walking in the woods and then um, we were just showing her some stuff and then she noticed this, that it was resin. Now we didn't know that what we, what we didn't know what it was before, but now we know. Uh, how do you harvest it? Um, you're gonna have to ask mommy about that. <laughs> you defer. Well, what I did was the other day. It came over here, and let's see all of it that has dripped down the tree. Now this I may not use for any salves or anything, but. It's great fire starter. So everybody knows that pine trees, you know, are really good for burning hot and fast. 
Well, if you need to get a fire started really quick, you can take these pieces that have the resin on them and put it in the middle of your little bundle and light that on fire and it will, it's a really good fire starter. Well, I wanna crank the wood stove up again, so uh, let's harvest a little bit of that and uh, see, it, see it in action. So this tree right here with the resin on it is competing with this big pine tree right here, different species of pine. So, unfortunate situation here. So this, this tree will not be as healthy as the other one because of having to compete with this larger one here. Bummer. We don't want to do too much because, I mean, this shows the tree's already been damaged. We don't want to go ripping off humongous chunks of bark. But I also got the pine needles that were on the ground that the resin had dripped on. So that'll be really good too. And when you're harvesting something like this, you just harvest what you need. More than that, it's just greed. So it's one of the things to try to keep in mind with uh, doing like harvesting out here, wild foraging, harvesting. That, uh, don't take more than what you need. And the more I look at this tree, the more I don't think that it's gonna have a lot of years of life. Probably not much more, just because it really doesn't look like it's in good shape. But the tree competing here and just looking at what's going on here, you can really see that there's a chunk missing out of this tree. We didn't take it out, but it's just, it doesn't look like it'll be in long-term good health. So, yeah, it is what it is. Okay, well there's some hot coals still in there, but we wanted to get it to pick up pretty quick. So I'm gonna take my little bit of these are little just pine pieces. We're gonna put these in here. And I'm gonna take a piece of this pine needle, pine resin. And we're gonna put this on there first and then these on top. Watch this. That's all I needed was a little bit of light. Now we're gonna put this piece in. Mommy, you saw what I put in to you? You put in some wood for me? Yeah. There we go. And, and I put my little piece. So that little piece of resin and pine needles really kicked that up really fast. So you can see why it would be really good in a survival scenario if you need to make a fire and uh, resin is really good for that. Hey Mike, come look at this. Wow, that gives it a much faster start. It's burning hot and fast. Quick starter. <laughs> 